In the past four years, two and a half million people have left the Democratic and Republican parties. Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV, and today I'm talking with Linda Killian, author of The Swing Vote, The Untapped Power of Independence. Linda, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Nick. Uh, most polls or most surveys show about 40% of, of American voters are independent. Define what that is and then talk about the real independence within the independent movement. Sure. Forty percent classify themselves. They're not Democrats. They're not Republicans. They're unenrolled. Some states call them undeclared, unaffiliated. In the past four years, two and a half million people have left the Democratic and Republican parties to become independents. They're really sick of the two parties. Yeah, talk about what's driving the exodus from, uh, you know, from either the Democratic or Republican parties, which, I mean, have been around since before the Civil War, so this is, you know, these are kind of tired brands or organizations, but why are people leaving in such numbers? I think it's the nonsense that's going on in Washington, the dysfunction, the polarization, the influence of money in politics, um, the inability to, to balance the budget, the inability to get something reasonable done. Here, now let me stop for a second because, you know, there, there seem to be a couple things going on. So people don't like the dysfunction. They don't like to see, say, a budget not even being passed. But is that because they want to cut the deficit or, uh, you know, other, you know, large pieces of legislation have been done in the past few years, whether it was the TARP uh, bailout or the stimulus was passed, uh, health care reform, uh, a couple of wars have been waged. Um, so what is it about the dysfunction that's getting in the way? People just saying, hey, you know, a pox on both your houses. Well, to take health care, for example, that was passed on a totally partisan basis without a single Republican vote. And independent voters didn't like that. That seemed like too much government for them. If you poll on individual pieces of health care, they actually poll pretty well. But when you ask people about the whole government program, it just seems like too much government. Do and independents care about the level of government spending and deficits? I think they care more about sanity and spending money wisely. Now, they do care about the deficit. That's the second thing they care about after the economy. So there's 20% or so of true independents, people who are not it, you know, recovering Democrats or Republicans. These are people who, whose votes are really up for grabs. It's about 20% of all voters, of all voters, swing, change their minds, vote for Democrats and then Republicans, vote for Libertarians right. if they're available. And these are, um, I, these are the people who decide national elections. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I and, think so. And how do we know that? Well, if you look at, for example, Barack Obama carried independence by about two points. In swing states, I focus on Colorado, Ohio, Virginia, and New Hampshire. Obviously, you can add Florida and North Carolina to that mix. The swing voters make the difference. You can't, you know, Mississippi and New York State, we're not worrying about who's carrying right. them, we know. So in these swing states that you have to win to get the electoral votes, you've got to get the swing voters. What are the things that are most important to them and how do you appeal to them? Well. It changes because the whole thing about independent voters is they're not dogmatic. So they voted for Barack Obama, they voted for the Democrats in 2006. They swung 19 points in voting for the Republicans in 2010 because they didn't like the way the Democrats were running the government. They're very concerned about the economy in this election. They're concerned about the deficit. Um, you talk a lot in the book about how you know centrist voters or independent voters tend to be kind of economically conservative and socially liberal. Now, mm -hmm. to to my ears, that sounds like crypto libertarians. What what's the overlap between independent voters and, uh, and libertarian ideas? I think that's a really good question. Um, and I think socially tolerant, fiscally responsible is another way to say yeah. it, I think. Because yeah. uh, sometimes the independent voters rebel from being labeled. You know, they don't even like to be called centrist because they feel like they pick and choose. You know, they agree with the Republican Party on some things, maybe defense. They agree with the Democratic Party on social issues. So I think there is overlap between independent voters, swing voters, and libertarians, I think they shy away from calling themselves libertarians in large numbers. And you said they're not dogmatic, they're not ideological purists, no, right? No, they, they're not at yeah. all. No, they're not. 
Why are the parties so remiss in actually tapping into what actual voters care about? because they don't really see it as being necessary, especially at the congressional level. Because I talk about redistricting reform, 435 House districts in the country, most of those are safe seats. For example, 2010, we had what we consider a wave election. Fewer than 15% of all seats turned over. These districts, the Republican and Democratic parties have a stranglehold on this process. They they rig, you know, public doesn't even get to testify. And so they don't have to appeal to the center to win their seats. Now, when you're running statewide, you do to a certain extent. But they, again, they go back to their party base, to their fundraisers, to their leaders. And they don't just feel that the voters are that important or that smart or I don't know. Uh, and I think that's why so many voters are disaffected. They told me, I would hold focus groups in Ohio and Colorado and New Hampshire, I heard the same thing. They don't think people are listening. They don't think their voice matters. They don't think the politicians really care what they want and think. And this is why the approval rating of Congress is in the single digits. I mean, that's a sign of great intelligence among the American electorate, isn't it? I want to thank uh, Linda Killian, author of The Swing Vote, The Untapped Power of Independence, for speaking with Reason TV. Thanks, Linda. Thank you.